Joining me now is Dan Rodriguez, who is Corporate Vice President and General Manager of the Network Platforms Group at Intel. Dan, the industry has been undergoing this network transformation journey for a number of years now. Where are we in terms of NFV? So let's talk a little bit about where we've been on the journey and kind of and where the market is now. So when you think back over the last decade, when comm service providers really had a challenge in their network and they wanted to be able to essentially drive the same sort of flexibility, agility, and scale economies found in the world's data center into the world of, of networking. And since that time, we've made a ton of progress in the industry. We've seen collaborations across really the wide, vast ecosystem from OEMs, software vendors, system vendors, and comm service providers all pulling together to drive this more agile and flexible infrastructure. And of course, along the way, Intel's made investments and drove innovations in our Intel-based CPUs as well as our Intel-based platform ingredients to enable comm service providers to really converge multiple network workloads onto a single server, a rack of servers, or racks of servers. In addition to this, Intel sought the need to really invest really with our partners in open source software as well as drive standards in the market. We created programs such as Intel Network Builders that we have over 350 members today to help fuel innovation and drive this robust ecosystem. And I'm glad to say that these investments really with the broader community have started to pay off. And Intel is going to continue to invest a really in network transformation, delivering a network platform that has the right mix of silicon and software so service providers can get the most out of an agile infrastructure. Now, Intel has been making a lot of investments in the radio access network. Can you give us more details about some of those? Yes, when you think about the journey of network transformation, in the core network, really NFE was the catalyst. And you look ahead to 5G, you think about 5G as much more than just delivering mobile broadband, you think about all the new services that the 5G network promises to deliver. So Intel realized that to be able to deliver really the full value of this 5G experience, we need to make investments to extend our data center technology, not only into the network, but all the way into the edge, into the radio access network. And as such, we've been partnering with the world's 5G leaders to deliver a high volume silicon foundation to really address the needs of 5G radio access networks. This includes a broad array of silicon solutions, ranging from our Xeon scalable processor, to our SOCs, to our custom ASIC capabilities, to FPGAs, to our structured ASICs. And today, we introduce our new Intel Atom P5900 that was really built from the ground up to address the needs of the base station market. This Atom P5900 combines the right compute, connectivity, and acceleration technologies to deliver outstanding performance per watt for base station workloads. Furthermore, when comm service providers and telecommunication equipment manufacturers utilize Intel's architecture, really from the core to the edge, they have the opportunity to reuse their software and really scale their investments across their entire infrastructure, allowing them to save both time and money. Now, Intel's shared a plan that it intends to reach 40% of the mobile base station market by 2022. Are we still on track to achieve that goal? Yeah, last year we actually talked about that uh, with different analysts at different events. And we talked about how prior to 2015, we really had no market segment share um, in the base station market. And since that time, we've made a lot of investments and we partner with the overall community. And, and we made a projection that we'd hit 40% market segment share by 2022. Now, I'm very happy to say that due to overwhelming positive momentum with our customers and the strong product lineup we have, we're able to pull forward that MSS projection and deliver 40% MSS by 2021, making us the world's leader in 5G base station silicon. Now, we're also hearing a lot about the virtualized radio access network. What's Intel's view on, on VRAN? Yes, so if you think about 5G, uh, 5G will have a number of deployment options. As comm service providers need to, need to support multiple frequency bands, multiple services, as well as multiple use cases. And virtual RAN is one such option. And similar to when service providers are looking to cloudify the core networks, they also are looking for similar aspects when they look to cloudify the radio access network. They're looking for flexibility and agility to really scale out to be able to support all sorts of new services and use cases. And the great thing is, is that we've been partnering with a wide variety of customers, whether it's OEMs, software vendors, or system vendors, to have a breadth of commercial-ready solutions. Furthermore, we partner with the industry on different standards effort to drive global scale of virtual RAN. 
And then I'm pleased to say we've seen a lot of traction in the industry where we have positive momentum from leading service providers from Rocketon to Telefonica to China Mobile to Ch China Telecom where they're starting early deployments. Now, we hear a lot of discussion in the industry and a lot of excitement around 5G infrastructure and the edge. You can't really mention one without also referencing the other. What are the big opportunities here for Intel? Absolutely. When you think about 5G, the heart of 5G is all about delivering new innovative services for not only consumers, but also for businesses, really impacting multiple industries in the future, whether it's industrial, financial services, smart cities, or smart venues. So when you think about that broader 5G vision, you immediately should think about edge computing. Because in order to be able to deliver the promise, deliver all those different use cases, you need to distribute computing to the location that's best capable of handling a specific application and the underlying needs. Some of these applications require low latency, some high bandwidth, some even need greater levels of security. That's the point of really driving edge computing. And when you think about what Intel is trying to do, we're trying to invest in a wide array of silicon portfolio as well as software to be able to support those different applications across a wide variety of locations and really help um, the service providers as well as enterprise innovate with 5G. Well, Dan, thanks very much indeed for sharing Intel's vision with us here today. Mm -hmm.